So let me talk about edge classification. You can check every edge in this graph gets visited. In a directed graph, every edge gets visited once. In an undirected graph, every edge gets visited twice, once from each side. Um, and when you visit that edge, there's sort of different categories of what could happen to it. Uh, maybe the edge led to something unvisited, then you went there. We call those tree edges. And that's what the parent pointers are specifying. And all the bold edges here are called tree edges. This is when we uh, visit a new vertex. Uh, via that edge. OK, so we look at the other side of the edge. We discover a new vertex. Those are what we call tree edges. It turns out they form a tree, a directed tree. That's a lemma you can prove. You can see it here, we just have a path. Actually, a forest would be more accurate. We have a path A, B, E, D, and we have an edge C, F. But in general, it's a, it's a forest. So for example, if there was another thing coming from E here, to modify my graph, uh, we would at some point visit that edge and say, oh, here's a new way to go. And now that bold structure forms an actual tree. So these we call tree edges. You can call them forest edges if you feel like it. Um, there are other edges in there, the non-bold edges. And the textbook distinguishes three types. Three types? Three types. So many types. They are forward edges, uh, backward edges, and cross edges. Some of these are more useful to distinguish than others, but it doesn't hurt to have them all. So uh, for example, this edge I'm going to call a forward edge. Just write F. That's unambiguous. Uh, because it goes, in some sense, forward along the tree. It goes from the root of this tree to a descendant. There is a, a path in the tree from A to D, so we call it a forward edge. By contrast, this edge I'm going to call a backward edge uh, because it goes from a node in the tree to an ancestor in the tree. If you think of parents, I can go from D to its parent to its parent, and that's where the edge goes. So that's a backward edge. Double check I got these not reversed yet. That's all right. Forward edge, because uh, I could go from D to its parent, to its parent, to its parent, the edge went the other way. That's a forward edge. OK, so uh, forward edge goes from a node to a descendant in the tree. Backward edge goes from a node to an ancestor in the tree. And when I say tree, I mean forest. Uh -huh. And then all the other edges are cross edges. Uh, so I guess here, this is a cross edge. It goes, in this case, it goes from one tree to another. It doesn't have to go between different trees. For example, let's say I'm visiting B, then I go back to E, I visit G. Uh, there could be this edge. If this edge existed, it would be a cross edge. Because G and D are not ancestor related. Neither one is an ancestor of the other. They are siblings, actually. Okay, so there's, in general, there's going to be some subtree over here, some subtree over here, and this is a cross edge between two different subtrees. This cross edge is between two uh, sort of non-ancestor related, I think is the shortest way to write this. Uh, 
uh, subtrees or nodes. OK. Uh, a little puzzle for you. Well, OK, I guess first question is how do you compute this structure? How do you compute which edges are which? Uh, this is not hard, although I haven't written it in the code here. You can check the textbook for one way to do it. Uh, the parent structure tells you which edges are tree edges. So that part we have done. Every, every parent pointer corresponds to the reverse of a tree edge. So you, at the same time, you could mark that edge a tree edge, and you'd know which edges are tree edges and which edges are non-tree edges. If you want to know which are forward, which are backward, which are cross edges, the key thing you need to know is, uh, hmm. well, in particular for backward edges, one way to compute them is to mark which nodes you are currently exploring. So when we do a DFS visit on a node, we could say at the beginning here, basically, we're starting to visit S. So say start S. And then at the end of this for loop, we write we're finished with S. And you could mark that in the S structure. You could say S dot in process is true up here. S dot in process equals false down here. Keep track of which nodes are currently in the recursion stack just by marking them and unmarking them at the beginning and the end. Then we'll know if we follow an edge and it's an edge to somebody who's already in the stack, then uh, it's a backward edge. Because that's everyone in the stack is an ancestor from our current node. Detecting forward edges, mm, it's a little trickier. Forward edges versus cross edges. Any suggestions on an easy way to do that? I don't think I know an easy way to do that. <laughs> Can be done. Uh, the way the textbook does it is a little bit more sophisticated in that when they start, a, start visiting a vertex, they record the time that it got visited. What's time? Uh, you could think of it as the clock on your computer. Uh, another way to do it is every time you do a step in this algorithm, you increment a counter. So every time anything happens, you increment a counter. And then you store the value of that counter here for s. That would be the start time for s. You store the finish time for s down here. And then this gives you, this tells you when a node was visited, and you can use that to compute when an edge is a forward edge, when, and otherwise it's a cross edge. It's not terribly exciting, though, so I'm not going to detail that 